Good evening and welcome to the Newburyport School Committee meeting for September 17th, 2018. Mrs. Kennedy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Mr. DeCanter? Here. Mr. Cole? Here. Mr. Menon? Here. Mayor Holliday? Present. Mr. Hawkeiser? Here. Mr. Reed is absent. Mr. Callahan? Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. Could we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. We, um, in, in the interest of um, not keeping people longer than they need to be, um, we're going to move our agenda around a little bit. Um, we're going to turn over to the superintendent here for recognition of some district staff. Um, and then we will have public comment and do our consent agenda and move through the rest of our agenda. So item four on the agenda is actually going to take place now. I turn it over to Sean. All right. Well, thank you very much. And um, I think very important for us as a school community is to recognize not only best practice, but our staff members that kind of go above and beyond um, and really make learning very special in our schools. And we have some staff members here today that we would like to recognize. Um, I would like at this time to call up our principal um, for pre-K and K, uh, Ms. Sullivan. And I believe, um, Tarzer. Yes. Tarzer. Oh, and not, I'll do Tyler in a second, okay. yeah. So why don't you come on up and uh, we're gonna be recognizing um, some special staff members. You can come right up here. Oh, yep. right over there? I'll move, okay. right, right in the front. Sean. I'd like to be able to get three camera angles so we can <laughs> see the editing process. <laughs> Okay, thank you. This is so nice to start the year by being able to recognize such a wonderful thing in our district. Um, we have been implementing PBIS with the help of the committee, um, but also with two amazing coaches that I am so very honored to work with. These two staff members have done the most amazing job in terms of ordering signage for our building, um, putting in place clipper tickets and incentives for the children, filming videos of great behavior and then rolling out lessons for really the first three weeks of school. I think we've just finished with our assemblies and everything and they have done the most amazing job and I'm really, really pleased to be here tonight to say thank you to Michelle Clark, our school psychologist and PBIS coach. <laughs> And her co-coach, Lisa Mascara, who is our BCBA at the Bresnahan School. And Mr. Menon was just asking me, what is PBIS? Positive no, Behavior. I know, but I just <laughs> Positive Behavior Intervention Supports. And that is teaching the children really universal language, universal expectations in all areas of the school. And they can earn at our school clipper tickets. Um, for doing the right things and then earn class incentives and other um, other wonderful incentives. Um, we have some drawings in the morning, uh, but really we could not have done this without Michelle and Lisa, who really are so busy in their own right and their own roles, but have done the most amazing job, have worked such long hours this summer, and have really um, just been such a motivating force in our community. So thank you so very much. Sure. Come on up. Yep, come on up. We have a couple oh, certificates oh. of appreciation for it. At this time, we would, uh, I'd like to call up uh, Tara Rossi to kind of present um, the Molin staff that's here tonight uh, for their dedication and commitment regarding also PBIS. And just for the 
uh, school committee and the people that are uh, watching, um, the opening of schools uh, this year was just uh, really, it was awesome. Um, I think the initiative, the PBIS, the principals and the staff really creating a culture of people, uh, the students feeling really welcome coming into school um, and visiting the schools, you know, throughout the year thus far, you can just sense a, a great place to learn. And, and I really just want to thank the staff that's here for all your efforts too. Uh, so at this time, Principal Rossi. Thank you. Here you go. <coughs> Hi. Good, how are you? Good. Thanks, everybody. I want to ditto Amy with it's awesome to start a school year with recognizing some amazing staff because we have so many of them. Um, I actually have five out of my seven PBIS team members here, um, and each member has been jumped on board right away and has been highly beneficial. Um, they just finished um, doing expectations for every area of the building. They created PBIS passports. Every single Molin student had a little passport book and as they went through and learned the expectation for an area, they, were, they got their stamp. Um, they created PBIS handbooks. Um, the work that they do is just amazing. And I think a big point about PBIS is, you know, it's it supports for all students. It's part, a big part of creating safe and supportive schools. And so it lays a foundation for every student. So recognizing students for being respectful, responsible, and kind. And then if there are students that are struggling with different types of social emotional behavioral issues, we step it up to a different level and look at those students as individuals and see what we can put into place for them. So um, we just have a fantastic team. So I would like to recognize Maggie Flaherty. She is one of our school adjustment counselors. You gotta stand up and get your clap. <laughs> Steph Berger, she is one of our special education teachers. <laughs> Kristen Smolsky, our school interventionist. And behind them, Lee Cassidy, a fifth grade teacher. And Emily Weber, fourth grade teacher. And I am highly appreciative of all their work. Oh, thank you. The other two that are missing are Jess Burke. She is also one of our special education teachers and Alyssa Gallegos, our Molin Knock art teacher. I'm afraid you have to stand up again and come, come up for the photo opportunity that <laughs> Angela will get. Yeah, there's yes. that. Yes. Yes. All right. I'll get from the front. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all so much. <laughs> 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 all right, so team Sean cooperate. Really? Okay. Amy will be next. Yeah, you can't hold Sean, give them. Sean, give them the certificate so they can hold them. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll give you a mop. Like, yeah. Before we take a recess, I have one more recognition. Um, let me just. So through a uh, interview process, I would just like to update the um, assistant principal at the NOC. Um, so Principal Furlong and her staff in the first week of school conducted uh, interviews for the first round. Um, and then there were three finalists uh, that went through an interview process for the second round, um, and then one selection has been made um, with Mr. Nick Makos, who will be appointed as the new assistant principal at the NOC. And just to give a little background on Mr. Makos, he grew up in Lynn, Massachusetts, uh, graduated from Lynn English, and he has strong uh, North Shore ties is two master's degrees, one in education, teaching American studies and history, and his second master's is in educational leadership. Nick has been in education for the past 12 years, several years teaching in a diverse range of students on various levels, 
in the last five years of administrative experience uh, as an assistant principal, a K-12 social studies uh, curriculum coordinator in Everett, and as an interim, currently was an interim assistant principal in the Briscoe Middle School in Beverly. Mr. Marcos brings a lot of teaching and administrative experience with him. A few key areas, he's very familiar with PBIS, which we just recognized tonight, implementations of a STEAM in Algebra one in the sixth grade in one of his previous schools, which also tied in to the dual enrollment program later on uh, at the high school um, in the district that he worked in. He's very dedicated and committed to the staff and students from all the reference references. Nick will go beyond the call of duty to help any student and family, and he will become part of the Newburyport community. So we are pleased to announce Mr. Marcos will be joining the Nock Middle School team, and I'd like to have him come on up with Principal Furlong. recommend if we could take a five minute recess to have school committee and myself congratulate our teachers once more and then we can get on with our regular business. So good to me. Okay. Five minutes. We'll take a picture with
all rejoined here, and uh, we'll we'll get this smoothed out a little bit. Um, yeah. But I think the important idea is that we're going to be recognizing teachers, staff, students for the work that they're doing in the schools. Um, we now open a period of public comment. Um, if there is anybody in the audience who would like to make a comment, I would ask two things of you. Uh, one, that you stay roughly within about two, two and a half minutes, and the other, that you give us the address, which is uh, part of our statutory requirements so we know who's speaking. A name. A name. Yeah, you could give our name, your name too. Or you could give somebody else's name, we, we wouldn't know. Um, does anybody have anything they'd like to share with us? Oh. Uh, good evening. I am L.B. Thapa, uh, 140 uh, High Street. Uh, I am very much privileged to be here today to learn about PBIS. Uh, My query would be, what would be the methodologies to make positive interventions for those kids who have been addicted to video games again? Mm -hmm. In one hand, we share the uh, it's a very positive attitude that has been uh, developing through video games. It is very easy to convince, as some of the experts over here have been uh, rightly appointed uh, uh, vice uh, principal or assistant principal. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, he is also expert on that. So my query would be how we we positively intervene to those kids who have been addicted right from the video games and they, they fix onto the Xbox. So what would be the methodologies that it may not be the problem here, but this is the problem in our part of the globe. Mm -hmm. So that the students are not well uh, uh, prepared and then they develop their own words to uh, behave with others, they don't care for their parents or the seniors as well. I think it is not the case over here. In case it is here, how we will we adopt and then uh, let's say make the positive intervention in this case? Thank you very much. Thank you. That's a good question, and and uh, we'll try to direct you to where we can give you some answers. Um, moving on to the consent agenda, do we have warrants? Yes, we have uh, four warrants. The first warrant. I move that the following name bills of the Newburyport Public Schools amounting in the aggregate $5,135 and no cents be approved and forwarded to the city auditor for payment. There are no conflicts. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. I move that the following name bills and payrolls of the New Report Public Schools amounting in the aggregate $15,629.57 be approved for the city auditor for the city auditor to make payment and deduct the funds from the school's account. There are no conflicts. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I move that the following name bills of the Newburyport Public Schools amounting in the aggregate $21,184.76 be approved and forwarded to the city auditor for payment. There are no conflicts. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. And the last warrant. I move that the following name bills of the New Report Public Schools amounting in the aggregate $281,402.72 be approved and forwarded to the city auditor for payment. There are no conflicts. Second. I knew that you would be done. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, we also have a set of minutes before us uh, from the business meeting of Tuesday, September 4th. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. 
second Brian Callahan. Uh, any discussion, changes? Mayor? Uh, there's just a, a little bit of a change that has to happen at the top of the, yeah. which uh, Mrs. Kennedy, uh, normally I start the order, the meeting, and then it's you turn over the, the chairmanship to you. Um, vice chair is here, not me. There's just a, a little bit on the top of the minutes that have to be corrected in terms of the start of the meeting, and then you took over as chair. Okay. That kind of, so it's just okay. a, a, you know, a minor. And th one of the parents' names was Marianne and not Marietta. So okay, so just that, uh, with those changes? Yeah. Opposed in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Um, we are going to move to the fifth item. Uh, I had a, a uh, uh, an, an email uh, about uh, a project that uh, a young local artist is proposing, and I wanted to give her an opportunity to talk with us about it. She's also talking to several other groups in the community, and you can, if you would join us up here, uh, probably take a seat right over here. That will get you on camera. This is Emily Cruteau. I got the pronunciation right? Yeah, yeah, correct. Welcome. Thank you. My name's Emily. Um, a little bit about myself was I'm, I was a freshman at College of Charleston studying art. Um, and now I'm on a gap year before I go back to resume my studies at an art school, hopefully. Um, I'm spending my time traveling um, in my gap year and expanding my portfolio, trying to get like different projects, you know, experiment with different like art opportunities and what I can get myself into. Um, I work a lot with the Vans Shoe. I don't know if anyone's uh, familiar with that um, brand, but yeah, I do a lot with them and drawing on them and customizing every shoe to every um, commissioner to like what their interests are and I. If you get my paper, there's some examples of my work on there. Um, and my passions besides art are like surfing, snowboarding, and fashion and hiking. And so I'm here today because, um, sorry, there is a spelling error. It's no I know it's Knock Middle School, but I spelled it, there's Knox Middle School. So <laughs> FYI. I was um, just going to blame spell check, so yeah. you're, <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> Uh, but I am trying to get into working with skate parks and getting interactive with having my art be kind of like in the community, not just like something like hanging on someone's wall like in their room. You know what I'm saying? Like something like people can experience on a daily basis and like different types of people and get more eyes on my work. Um, and so I've got, I'm doing a project right now at um, Red Alert Skate skate shop, which is an indoor skate park in Dover, and I'm um, completely redoing their skate park and painting all over it and doing murals like through their um, their walls and on their ramps and stuff. And so I'd like to get like more projects lined up for myself. Um, and I know the Knock Middle School, it would be an amazing location to do or another project as so. I mean, it's very concrete and it's a great space to work. Um, so I'd love to, I, there's more also more examples of like so what other people have done with skate parks um, too like over the years and kind of get like more of an interactive piece and I'd love to get um, students involved too. I think that'd be a great opportunity like working with high school students maybe a part of the art, um, National Art Society um, to get them involved with this and like community like kind of bring everyone together for that. And I'd love to do that and get you guys' support so I could go on to further planning, like what exact designs or costs and type of paints and everything to continue on to do it, yeah. Great. Um, I, I, of course, would defer to our <laughs> skate uh, board expert. You're probably the only skater on the school. <laughs> board, I guess. Well, I used to skate. But. <laughs> Uh, the mayor tried it once. <laughs> I did. I did organize the first skateboard That's true. tournament. Did you ride though? No, I didn't. No. <laughs> I didn't drop in. I didn't drop in. <laughs> uh, I think it's a great idea. You know, the, the concrete is just boring. You know, um, anything to. It's just, it's just fun, right? I don't think there's yeah. no downside. I wouldn't think to having it done. Um, yeah, I think it'd be cool. And there's a huge amount of kids in the schools that would be into yeah. assisting too. So yeah. it'd be fun. 
I, I would also hope that some of the skaters would get involved. Yeah. yeah. It's their skate yeah. park, you know? Yeah, yeah. definitely. I'm still I'm friends with um, the company that built the park back when it was, it was like 16 or 17 years ago now, right? Yeah, about like that. that. Yeah. Um, I'm still in touch with him, and so he would be into it because they're all artists too. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So I think they'd be willing to help out. I mean, that's a huge amount of canvas. Yeah, to yeah. Do, right? Definitely. And then yeah. that one wall is like 15 feet tall. Yeah, yeah. With a transition at the bottom of it. Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, I think it'd be a cool project. Three to five Any other questions? All, all of that paint could be done for three to five hundred. Well, I was thinking, like, um, what would be the most like realistic way to paint a space that big that it's like can be not ruin the skate park or affect skaters? You know what I'm saying? Like, if I use wall paint, it might chip off over time. And so I was thinking of using spray paint would be the like it would doesn't really wear as much over time as like a latex paint would, and also wouldn't affect the the um, skating as much as possible. Um, so it's like $5 a can of spray paint. So I think that, I mean, I, after I do this skate park, I could give you more of a estimate on how much paint I would need and how much the costs per square footage. I would suggest that you put a proposal together in terms of what you would need. And then with um, paint stores in town, mm -hmm. um, you know, we could send a letter in support you could go to a couple of these stores and ask if they'd be willing to donate some of the paint. Yeah. And then we could recognize those um, donations. So uh, we have a lot very generous businesses in our community, so yeah. that might help them. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Out. Yeah. So yeah. happy to help you with that. Yeah. I'd love to. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I have two questions. Um, one is, uh, really more for Brian probably. <laughs> Is there any, any, because I've definitely not done any of this, not with skateboarding or anything like that, the, the skateboard park. Is there any concern with the optics of the design? Just <laughs> misjudging <laughs> the lips or the edges of the, uh, no, the is no. there something we should read well, no, I mean, <coughs> I mean, Vans has a competition every year and the bowls there are painted similar to the one that's on this it's and those guys are doing far more difficult things than the kids who skate here are doing. So yeah well that's one of the reasons i'm asking our kids aren't expert more seasoned and no that may be a problem it's not be a problem like they can it's see well, the it's curves all, and all that sort of stuff yeah. it's not a, like i'm looking at this i can't well you know yeah <laughs> if you think about when youth services does their uh their nighttime skate and they have the fire department brings the giant lights mm -hmm. that creates one whole wall of dark and it's still fine. You go into it, and all of a sudden you're blind for a minute, and you come back out of it. So I wouldn't think it would be a problem at all. Okay. Or you can do different, you know, lighter colors on the yeah. inner, on the inner corners in the bowl. Yeah. Just to yeah. So there's definitely ways. Shadows. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know. I'm just wondering if there are any design considerations we should take into. Just, just to I mean, maybe so, I mean, we, you know, at the end of the day, that thing is a 15 foot deep hole, and that's where the most dangerous part about it, you know, because there's no f no no railing or anything. You can walk in and fall straight to the bottom. So I don't think. Having so kind of so I wouldn't use blacks probably on the corner because that looks like it's just going away. But yeah, can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah. No, that was definitely going. something I want to consider when like creating designs and ideas for that because. So, so would you bring back to the school committee and sort of your it, work it, with yeah. the students and be sort of this is what we've decided to do for this big bowl of yeah, 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 for us to sort of look at yeah. it before. Yeah. You know, not that we want to direct your artistic process, but. You know, I, I do think this this one is a little bit busy for the <laughs> um, But do you know the square footage of the? I do not know. Can you find that? Yeah, yeah. I have, go ahead. Second yeah, question. I, I, I have one other uh, comment, and that is that uh, are you working with any of the art teachers? in the school district? No, I have not um, reached out to any of the... Uh, is that part of your plans? Yes, I would love to, yeah. Okay, because if that's part of your plans, you have a community organization, outside expertise yourself, working with a teacher. Uh, that smells like a partnership grant to me. It does. <laughs> the, uh, it does. The Newport that's Education true. Foundation. Yes, that's, that's a good true. idea. Good yeah. point. We have grants for these type of partnerships, so... Uh, you could get yourself a small grant to be able to cover the, the costs. Yeah. Well, part of it, yeah. 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 
I would imagine this whole thing is outside of our purview. We don't run the park. We don't own the park or anything like this. Yeah, park. It's, park. it's, it's a gray area. It's so it's a gray area. Yeah. So just out of, out of curiosity, is there a process in Newburyport for public art proposals? Well, it depends on what property. If it's on, uh, it would go before the city council. If it's you know city streets and you know, there's a particular ordinance that requires their approval. But um, for use, I don't know that we've ever done. Uh, permanent kinds of artwork like this that have been approved. I, I'm I thinking mean, like sculptures that have been put in right. on the rail trail. That and are I'm permanent. thinking like the uh, like the painting underneath the bridge by Michaels on the rail trail. Right, that's all part of the rail trail that was um, never approved by you know with the <laughs> <laughs> the coordinator of the rail trail and working with artists okay. and you know. Just I'm just curious yeah. if. Mm -hmm. If other people so would be cool interested. Person. If it's, you know, you could talk to Richard Jones at the clerk's office to see if they're, I don't think that they're, I can't He's also a phenomenal artist. Yeah, he's oh, really? a really, oh, he's yeah. really nice. He's pretty good. Um, <laughs> uh, so every yeah, time I mean, I just, just find out if they're, if they're, you know, who you need to get a permission from. I mean, we can, we can certainly take a vote. It's not a binding vote because I don't think, as Dave said, our, our responsibilities are yeah. limited here. Um, but it, it, we could take a vote that is an endorsement of the project, certainly, um, and, and uh, we could do that. Um, but there, you may need, I know that you, I think, are going to talk to the Parks Department yes, and yes, Newburyport yes. Youth Services as well? Yes, yes. Okay, great. I, I mean, it sounds like you know who you need to talk to. Yep. Yeah. This looks yeah, like a wonderful yeah. project. It's just one other, just question, because you mentioned the one you're doing up in Dover is, is indoor? Yes, Okay, it is. so that you're talking about outdoor. You're talking about concrete, so I think, it, Brian, I think it'd be really good if she did get in touch with the folks who helped build it to find out yeah. you know, what type of paints are going to yeah. work best with that would be, yeah. porous awesome. concrete and not, you know, affect the friction. Dover ones in, is concrete too, right? I believe so, yes. You know, yeah. yes. Except this is just outside exposed to weather. Yeah, yeah I mean, eventually it will wear off, but... Right and being, now. like, cautious with colors too, I'm like... I'm thinking, like, when the National Grid comes and spray paints and street that stays for ages yeah. right, that little mark so. but there's also with this concrete here if I'm not mistaken water gets absorbed in and dries with um, the sun I know it I in, in the bottom of the bowl in the bottom of the bowl it'll build up but yeah. if it's you know if it gets damp it dries and it, you know you just I, I think there's just some engineering yeah, stuff. I mean, I just know that it ha it's done before because the Vans has a huge competition and they paint the whole thing and then they yeah. don't unpaint it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Brian, do you mind sort of being a an advisor <laughs> on this project? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Brian can be reached through his email address. I'm sure he'll he'll connect yeah. up with you. Yeah. I appreciate that, Brian. I hate to put you on the spot, but. Sure. I don't think it would be real productive if I was. <laughs> <laughs> So, do we have a motion to accept, uh, to endorse this project? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous endorsement of the school committee. Thank you. Right. Good luck with it and keep us surprised. Come back and let us know what it's gonna look like. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is uh, Assistant Superintendent Angela Bix report. That was quick. <laughs> we got to that spot pretty quick. It's quick, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. Well, thank you. I just have a brief update. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, how we are changing our learning walks this year. And it's kind of exciting. We're in the process of planning. Right now, we're um, working with our extended leadership team and, um, and we are planning to do district learning walks this year so that we can develop a really good view of teaching and learning pre-K through 12. So- you, I'm just, I, I, I'm sort of the jargon police. Sure. So if you could explain Thank you. what a learning walk is to the yes. community, that would be helpful. Yes, I'd be happy to. So a learning walk is when you um, take, do short observations in a classroom to observe teaching and learning. 
and we're planning to do them collaboratively. So our extended leadership team, we have 19 administrators on our extended leadership team. We've did, divided the extended leadership team into two teams, a team A and a team B, if you will. And um, the preliminary plan is that the teams will do learning walks on a in a particular building perhaps focused on a particular grade level or span of grade levels. And the entire team will participate in that learning walk on any given month. So for example, let's say that there was going to be a learning walk at the Mullen School and it was gonna focus on grades four and five. Team A may go to the school on one date and team B would go to the school on another day we would do short classroom observations, about 10 minutes, most likely, in pairs or trios. So, you know, not all 10 people that might be present that day would enter any classroom at one time. It would just be a couple of administrators at a time. And then after the learning walk, the administrative team will spend some time debriefing what was observed, and this is non-evaluative, you know, these are for the professional development of our administrative team. It's going to help us calibrate our supervision and evaluation practices. It's going to help us really all be on the same page about what best practices we're looking for and we want to celebrate in the district. It's going to help us grow as a team. But the exciting part about this is every administrator will see every grade level in the district. So we've done collaborative learning walks in the past, but we've stayed within the, um, the level that, say, the administrator works in. So central office may have paired up with a principal from the high school or with another administrator from the high school and observed the high school or done the same thing at the elementary or at the Mullen. This will be the ex whole extended leadership team is gonna get an opportunity to see pre-KK, to see one through three, dot, 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 right through the district. So at the end of the year, we're hoping that we're going to have a really nice holistic view of teaching and learning in our district. And, you know, we'll use that for future goal setting. Um, it will help us all get better in our roles as supervisors and um, in our ability to support our teachers in the work that they're doing in teaching our students. So we're, we're really excited about it. We're looking forward to getting that started. Um, it really will, it will be a lot of learning walks for the administrative team, but really for any one building, they will have two months in the year. So there'll be four walks in any, at any one grade level throughout the year. So. Mr. Kander. Um, so Bruce is a jargon police. I'm going to be the the Gold's police here. Okay. Um, I heard a lot of general objectives listed, but what specifically are the issues that you're trying to address with the change, and how will you measure it? How will you know that you have been successful? Mm -hmm. well, I think the first objective that we're addressing with the change is to make sure that our all of our supervisors are on the same page so that we all have, when we're saying this is an exemplary teacher, we all define an exemplary teacher or an exemplary practice the same way. So that's our first objective. And that is going to stem from some structured professional development that um, Superintendent Gallagher and I will develop as we work through this process. That's our main objective. This is really professional development for the leadership team is what this is about. Um, and so when we talk about goals, that's our primary goal. We may have focused areas within that goal. So we may say that on our learning walk in a given month, you know, we're going to be looking for, we're gonna pay particular attention to X because it may fit into the goals of the district. And so we want to say, how are we doing with that? Let's try to get a pulse on one of those objectives. So that's really, that's, that's the basis of it all. 
So I like the goal a lot. How are you measuring it? Well, we're going to measure it with the way that we handle our evaluations throughout the year, the way we hand, the way we conduct observations. This particular process, I just want to be clear, this particular process, we don't want any of our teachers to be nervous about this. This is not going to be every administrator yeah. in district coming in yeah. to do any kind of an evaluation. Yeah. But it will help the evaluators calibrate the way they are doing their evaluations associated to our evaluation system. Again, I'm gonna, I guess I'm, I'm I'm really being a stickler about this. Oh, too right, and and I think so. Basically, a couple of things. So we're bringing uh, district-wide observations of the learning walks um, for us as a leadership team to really have the ability to calibrate, you know, good teaching. So we're really when we're looking at for all of us, it's really identifying those five best practices consistently, and so your five best practices. You know, are going from you know, the objectives mm -hmm. to um, you know varied instructional practices, scaffolding, um, clarity, checking for understanding, and um, and at the end the review. So, for us as the supervisors, it's really for us to identify those instructional practices and to develop consistency. So, when you're looking at how you're going to measure that, when our as a district leadership team. When we're um, writing our walkthroughs or our observations, we should see consistency from best practices from Kathy Riccio, best practices from Angela Beck, best practices from Andy Wolf. So we're all consistently looking at that. So when you're looking at how do you measure best practices, you're going to see those in those observations throughout the school I guess, year. I, I guess where I'm coming from, or maybe I'm. I'm pushing a bit too hard, I, I, I won't comment any further on this, but I, I would ask that you think about, okay, if we did a course in a classroom, which is akin to professional development, this is a course for your administrators, we do assessments, we do some kind of measurement so that we know that the kids have learned it. Correct. And I guess what I am looking for is how do you know that you have a consistent view across if that's what your objective is how that you have achieved this goal what does it look like well and that's what I what yeah. I, I I think we I don't I don't hear yet and I invite right. you to explore yeah and, and I think it's when you I mean the observation the best practices is, is, as Dave knows it's really tied to your teacher rubrics right so when you're looking at the assessments right and you're looking at best practices tied to what we're looking for for consistency you're going to see that through the teacher rubrics through the whole observation process. Mm -hmm. So if we're like focus on student engagement as you know an aspect of best practices, you know where are you seeing student engagement throughout the district? So is there a way maybe we could think about? And we've talked a lot about this strategic planning and PLN work. And this this is what we know about our students. This is what we would like to see improved in our classrooms and our mm -hmm. teaching and learning exactly this is the process we went to go about seeing if it's there mm -hmm. this is the PD we've designed to cover the gaps and then ultimately next year's SGP was it effective or not mm -hmm. I, that all ties I, I think maybe that's right. so on, <laughs> on that sort of timetable but it all starts with and maybe we get a presentation or not but what do we currently know about our students and what w and our teaching, and what would we currently like to see improve? Right. And then how are we going to look? If we're going to go into a, a focused learning block and be looking for the following things, I would imagine you guys would want to have, whether it's, you know, I, I know Lisa pointing out there because she was sitting there. Lisa's working with the John Hattie, the Making Visible Learning. Correct. So are we looking at like his top four practices and saying, hey, listen, you know, we've noticed this in our teaching and learning and our students' growth. So we're going to go and see where we are with these things. I, I think I agree 100 percent. But I think before you can get there, we yeah. got to develop a system where you know the whole leadership team is supporting teaching and learning in the classroom. So that's the ultimate yeah. focus is yeah. right. for us to bring teaching and learning back so to the forefront. I, I guess to, and to this follow, is a practice to, to follow that has been done to follow in years. Dave's model. Yeah. That, he, that he explained. Okay, 
what do we know about our evaluators today? What are the gaps that we need to correct? Are we going to, or how are we going to identify if there are any gaps? Right. What needs to be corrected? What are we going to do about it? What are the results? Right. And that's, that's the process that I hear a lot about excitement, and I, I think it's a great project. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking for the structure so that as a school committee, when you come back and you say, hey, these are the results, we understand what it is that you've done. And we're not stuck in the situation. Well, the administrators worked really hard, and they went to so many classrooms. Well, yeah, but did they learn anything? You know, what, what, how do they compare against those goals? And that's that's what I'm looking for a little bit more. And, and uh, it's a little rude uh, applied to it. That's all. I think it's a great idea. I mean, I think as I sort of understand it, um, what the school committee is asking for is what's the baseline. What's the baseline in terms of practices? What's the baseline in terms of what we know about our students? And how does this project, um, A, help us understand that, and B, help us pick out what, what we really want to focus on and work on yeah. and do professional development around? I think that's what I'm hearing. Is that well, seem I, I would say before you get to understanding what the students, where our baseline is with the students, is where is the baseline with the administrators, and then right. with the teachers, and finally with the students. And, and I think I would add to that, I, I agree with you, um, Nick, that's what this is all about and part of our early work is to develop that baseline. Until we're there together and we're seeing the same thing and coming back and talking about what did you see, it's a very interesting process. I'm sure that, um, you know, that David has been through this before. When you do collaborative learning walks like this and you come back, it's amazing. <coughs> that Steve may have seen one thing and you would have seen another and I Absolutely. would have yet seen yeah. something else. Yeah. And that's how we start to create our baseline. But yeah. until we have the opportunity to get out there and start doing right. that work, then we'll have a baseline yeah. to go so from. Your, your, your measurement might be you know, a, a general agreement amongst all administrators mm -hmm. or a, a uh, description written by all administrators as to what a proficient teacher is in these in each of these areas that you just talked about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, right. what is what is something that's proficient and what is something that's above average in student engagement? And what you know, does that look like? And 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 if you can write that down, that is a good measurement. That's a great measurement because then you have something to refer to and say, oh, this is what this means. Right. And we do have, you know, we've got beautiful rubrics that have that Teacher in it, but it's now. all around the interpretation of that mm -hmm. rubric. Are we interpreting it the same way? And so that's what really what this work is about, so that we get better at being good supervisors. And so I guess I'm just thinking it would be nice, <coughs> and something I, I always hope when I do this sort of work, is can we come up with a a list of goals, something we're looking for growth in. Because after we come up with it, I mean, it's one thing to collaborate on you guys, but now, okay, so what, are, what exactly are we gonna start looking for? Now that we've all practiced seeing the same things and talking about the same things, what do we all wanna look for and we, what do we all wanna start working towards? Mm -hmm. So to create, it's a way to create those common goals across the district. Right. Um, other quick question, are teachers coming? I would imagine extended learning, extended leadership team involves like department chairs and maybe lead teachers, no? We don't have any lead teachers or department chairs that um, evaluate in the district, so. Well, not even evaluate, well, it's, they're not evaluated, so just people who, people who might be those change agents. Right. Or people who might not be those change agents, but the, are teachers involved in the walking around and seeing other teaching? They're involved right now with working with us for the, you know, to go into the classrooms. Yeah. And that would be a, the next it's phase down. of something like right. this for sure. This per, this particular rollout is very specific to yeah. the administrative right. team. But and I love so. that, and we have done that in the past where you we create learning walks that include teachers, and you're coming back and you're having the same conversation. So you have people from multiple roles in the district doing a learning walk together and coming back and talking about what they observed. And so I think that's very powerful, but we're not, that's not what this particular set of walks are about. 
that, that has happened intermittently in the district, and I, I think it's a, it's a you know a really good idea. I, does anybody else any questions? Because I do. Just a couple of them. This is not um, in any way sort of related to the formal evaluation process. Not at all. Okay. And I just was going to sort of follow up and take a different approach to the question that Dave asked: is um, how, what kinds of conversations are you having with teachers about this, about coming in? You know, they understand it's not part of the evaluation process. Right. Um, so this this was uh, a practice that I felt as a building principal was valuable. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we're kind of bringing this uh, working, you know, with our teachers and teachers union because, um, you know, once again, we want teaching and learning the center point of what we do every single day. And... Um, so to have the extended leadership team working together in two teams, going uh, to every classroom from pre-K all the way to grade 12 um, does two things. One, I think it develops a culture of sharing best practice because we're gonna be in those classes and, and seeing some great things and patting teachers on the back um, and not being evaluative towards them. Two, I think it develops, um, I think, great relationship building within the district. Um, and three, it opens up um, ideas from, you know, a great teacher in kindergarten and a great teacher in 12th grade or a great teacher in the middle school is great, is just great teaching. And you can apply great teaching across um, all grade levels. And I think for us, this is this is a new um, aspect that we're kind of bringing to Newburyport, and so we want, especially when we first start, we want this to be a very positive, inclusive, collaborative rollout. And then I think we get once we are, it becomes customary, like our teachers are seeing us as partners in the classroom. Then we can start pulling things out in the sense of, you know, um, providing more support to enhance some great things, or then trying to work with the staff and some of the gaps um, that they need. And, and I think the only way you know um, is what a teacher truly needs and what's going on in the classroom is to be in there. And if you're not in there, um, uh, it's hard to, to make to make decisions. So for us. I think as we're moving into you know um, this first year as a leadership team, building upon a lot of the stuff we we worked on over the summer, this is just the next aspect. And then I think we fine tune um, this process as we move forward. But we we really need to get into the classrooms first in a collaborative way. And and. Bruce, just to answer that question, there, you know, there'll be a message that before they start, there'll be a communication right. to all of the staff that lets them understand the process, um, that'll make it clear that it's non evaluative, that will explain the objectives of what's happening, just so that it won't catch anybody off guard. And, exactly. and we have been in talks with the teachers union about that. So. Great, it's great. Yeah, I, I just, you know, the the two wonderful things that, that, that may not necessarily uh, be able to be measured in, in ways that you know are objective um, are, are both really valuable and I think just the presence of administrators in the school and in the classroom I, I think is great and the thing that I really like about the way this is structured um, is that among the administrative team because they're going to be at every grade you, you really are encouraging sort of a holistic look mm -hmm. at good practices um, that that you know a principal from the high school can come into a pre-k class and recognize good teaching mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's really valuable and the larger thing that I think is valuable about that is it, it, it's got to help us with transitions between schools and grades and it, it just starts a whole other conversation mm -hmm. again that's not a measurable outcome related kind of thing but that is really a great value to the system so I, I, I think and in, in the end three of eight building administrators are new mm -hmm. That's it. so and you 
Four. Right. Yeah. Oh, no, three building. Three yes. building administ So oh, more than a third of your building administration is new. Right. So the idea that we need to get on board with some collaboration is mm -hmm. right in the pocket. Mm -hmm. It's important. Thank you. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, nothing else to add? That's it. I um, would ask Superintendent uh, Gallagher to give us his report, which has miscellaneous listed. Yes. So. <laughs> like eclectic. <laughs> I just, here's just a, um, just a, a quick summary on our program coordinated review. We've met with the state, um, which I provided in the Friday memo, um, and we'll do a full report um, regarding um, our corrective action plan on, on a few of the items that are partially uh, implemented. But I think this graphic, I'd like to share this with school committee. It kind of shows you the great work um, that's being done in the district from the program coordinator review. And I know that, just, um, I know there's an extensive uh, probably presentations last year in preparation for the program coordinator review. But if you look up top, these are all of the uh, items in special education, civil rights, and general ed requirements, and English learner education. All the ones up top are fully implemented in all of those different items. Down the bottom, you can see the items, um, you know, just a visual of what is partially implemented. And I've been through um, four of these in different districts. And this is, a, I think, a, a great report. Um, and obviously, we, we have some work to do in the partially implemented, and we'll provide that um, through a corrective action plan. But I just want, again, to uh, reiterate that overall, um, when we met with the state, they were, um, you know, as, as we work on the corrective action, they were, I think, impressed with a lot of the great work that we're doing here in Newburyport. And I just wanted to commend the, the, you know, before my time, obviously, the hard work of the staff, um, you know, throughout the district um, for a, a, a pretty good report here overall. And then as we move forward with the partially implemented, so we're in the process of drafting our corrective action plan. And when that's approved by the state, um, we'll do a full, a full update for the school committee and the public. But I just wanted to kind of share some good news with that of, of kind of where we are overall. Um, the other piece too is, uh, and we mentioned at the last, oh, I'm sorry. Can I ask a question sure. about this? I mean, I think that if you just, you know, looking at this, this is, it's nice to see that we have implemented so many. Now, if we go back to the report that you sent to us about the coordinated review after the last school committee meeting, will we be able to find what SC 18, yeah, SC we, 20 is? Yeah, and, and so. Um, so we may, can go back to that report correct. and that will give us correct. what these specifics are. Exactly. Okay. And, I, and, and, and right now we're in the draft form of our corrective action yeah. plan. So this is what was submitted to us. Some of our corrective <coughs> action plan right now we're working on. So these may be taking off. Um, so these partially implemented, once we submit some other documents, this may not be the final partial implement. So we're in the draft form. But we can provide, I mean, it's that same report. I'm sure that you guys provided this before, but we can show you exactly what the partially implemented is right now. So you sent us something after the last school committee meeting, and I'm assuming that we can get Mm -hmm. about the coordinated review Course. that this information would be there. Yeah, it's public information. Yeah, so sure. um, in terms of what these are. Absolutely. So you mentioned that we are going to be evaluated in three areas. Is it going to be special ed, civil rights, and ELL? This, this, is this was, this was, yeah, this is the, this is the program coordinated review. So this was from last year. This, this is, is the audit. Yeah, this is not yeah. the audit. Uh, yes, so uh, that's, that's why, yeah. right. <laughs> we we yeah, have two yeah. more two more other I, I would I would it's going on. I, would I wish it. this was yeah no. I, I have <laughs> this say. was all the work you did last year. Okay. And the state. Um, no, we, I remember yes. us working on, on yes. these and getting updates on this. Correct. But I just yes. Yeah. So, this so is but this must be that. helpful in terms of the self assessment that you're doing. It's going to be very helpful. It will be. Okay. Yes. Yes. So the uh, that's what we're saying down the bottom on the partially implemented. We're in draft form on corrective action plans. 
And then what we'll do is when those corrective action plans are approved by the state, um, we'll do a full presentation of that for the school committee and the general public. Thank you. Yes. Great. Well, I can see I got my lottery picks. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Got more. For just, uh, just a few more. Um, uh, extended leadership team. We we've been talking about having uh, more of a social media presence. Um, and we brought in Mr. James Coffey that worked with us during uh, our meeting. Um, and really looking at you know, Twitter and, and, uh, and you know, Facebook and, and ways that uh, we can communicate to the Newburyport uh, community and really trying to work on controlling the message and, and providing a lot of facts um, out there. And, and I know this has been one aspect of our school committee that we're all working together on too, on communication and uh, looking at updating the website and providing uh, easy information for parents and families to access. So this is one of our goals and, and I think you'll start seeing uh, with the extended leadership team, some more Twitter feeds going out there. Uh, I think Lisa Furlong, uh, she has seven followers right now, and <laughs> I'll be having my uh, superintendent's Twitter uh, getting rolled up pretty soon, and hopefully people will follow me. And Are we gonna put a, a page on the website like that literally just has, these are the feeds that are out there? Yeah, with the, the icons, icons. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yes. Because yeah. even, I mean, like I use it a lot, and the only reason I found all the ones that I sent to you guys last yeah. week was by, seeing who follows who mm -hmm. and like so I, I i found somebody's i forget who it was but they had the newburyport athletics which kyle does a great job kyle i mean that was almost job. at the football game the other i'm assuming it's right. kyle doing that yes. but then there's yes. a hockey one and a this one and then that yes. one but otherwise they're kind of they are a little tough to find right because the search engine on twitter you can't just put a newburyport and find what you want exactly it doesn't, unbelievably it doesn't work all that yeah. well so that's one of our goals, but it would be a nice page to yeah, see. Right, right on the, the website. Um, I had a great meeting uh, with the Education Business Coalition. You know, we were talking um, with Art Correa. He, he set up, um, we were talking about the strategic plan last time. We were talking about community partnerships. And this was a great initial meeting for us to bring a lot of the stakeholders back to the table with our not only our strategic plan, but with the idea of the college and career readiness and bringing the, the business community and the nonprofits to the table and uh, assisting us as we move forward. Um, beginning, uh, I sent out this, you know, I wasn't here this week, but uh, the beginning of the literacy assessments um, were completed. Um, and then we're starting to look at the state preliminary uh, scores and accountability data as a leadership team. So I know uh, Emily Russin and uh, Liz Kinsley did a great job with the beginning of the year assessments. They work collaboratively uh, together. The farmer's market, which you all know was a great success this summer. Um, we're working um, you know, with the community partners and developing a plan to continue that. Uh, throughout the fall um, to have pop-up farmers markets um, and that was just a I think a great community event um, actually I think I ate a lot more salad this summer because of the farmers market so <laughs> it's good for me too it's thank good. you yeah um, the, we're updating our evaluation uh, software um, and really trying to work again currently working with the teachers teachers union and really um, to provide the forms uh, for both administrators and teachers to provide ongoing feedback and to make those forms a lot uh, more accessible uh, for teacher feedback. So we're in the process of that really once again with the focus of teaching and learning at the forefront and really using, utilizing the evaluation system um, to benefit students and teachers and administration. Uh, technology update quickly. Um, 100% of the projectors are operational at the high school. In addition, the administrators' computers have also uh, been deployed throughout the district. Um, 
last week, Thursday, uh, Mr. Wolf and the administrative team and teacher and faculty had their open house. Uh, a lot of positive parent feedback. Um, and then also just to follow up on Mr. Wolf's um, presentation, he had the feedback sheets for staff and students um, throughout the two week period, as he said he would in room 118. They're collecting that data now, uh, taking a look at the rules and seeing what adjustments can be made through student voice. So exactly what Mr. Wolf said uh, him and his administrative team were gonna do, they're in the process. Um, and he's, uh, overall, general, I, you know, uh, not to ruin a surprise, but he said that the, the students and the faculty were, were pretty much, you know, uh, addressing the same issues and kind of on the same page, which was great to hear um, with that. Um, just some good news and teacher support. Uh, Jamie Skazowski uh, will be taking a group of students to um, provide entertainment at the uh, Newburyport Retired Teachers Luncheon later this month, so the students will be performing. And Mrs. Payton's class has begun some of great uh, STEM integration projects. So did you want to comment on that? that was just, it was wild. They're doing stick-plosions, and they're... Um, it, it's wonderful, they, they build these things out of what look like tongue depressors, you know, these designs, and then with one tap, the whole thing works like dominoes and takes off and explodes, but they're integrating iMovie into that work and putting them in slow motion and coordinating it to music, and they're it's really pretty doing impressive. amazing work yeah. with it. Yeah, it's very fun. Can we get some of those? Post it to the website, some yeah. of those products? Definitely, definitely. And then just on a personal note, I, I just would, you know, um, like to personally thank uh, all the support for my family and I, um, you know, with my dad's passing this past week, um, the Newburyport School Community and Community at Large, uh, just been overwhelming with the support. And, you know, I can't, it made a difference uh, for me and my family to get us through a tough week. Um, and words can't express how grateful I am to this community. Uh, I'll never forget, um, you know, the, the kindness that everyone displayed. And especially our school committee here tonight I, in Mayor Holiday. I can't thank you all enough. Um, uh, I'm very blessed to be here as a superintendent of this great community. And I'm looking forward to um, working together and taking us to that next level. But I just want to take a moment and thank you all for your, for your support. And that's my um, that's my report. Yeah. Uh, do we have any committee reports? When is the finance meeting? Tomorrow morning, eight fifteen. Terrific. If there's no other business before us, I wish I'd had that dollar out here. <laughs> I just would like to recognize Kyle in terms of the email that he sent out this morning. I mean, it was really uh, just a horrific time for Merrimack Valley and Lawrence, North Andover, and Andover in terms of what they have experienced. And I am so proud of our athletic teams for the initiative they're taking starting today through uh, Friday night's football game and they're going to be collecting toiletries, clothes, paper products, non-perishable foods, uh, baby items, bottled water and cash donations. And they're gonna just fill up vans and as one's filled, they're gonna take it uh, to the communities and they will be collecting, including through the football game on Friday night. So uh, please try and get that word out. Uh, if you receive the email, I posted on Facebook, so we're putting signs up at City Hall. Uh, let's do our part to help these poor families. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do I have a nice job. Nice job, our <laughs> athletics, our students and athletic department. Really. Do I have a motion to So adjourn? moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.